Yeah, Sam, uh, you can uh, you're setting up uh, for the you uh, are you can I speak or yeah yeah okay because how do you do a full screen sorry I, I missed you there sir a uh, full screen on it or yeah it will enlarge just a click away okay that, that's how it is but uh, yeah, now this is, yeah. I think you need to slightly enlarge it and remove okay. the side. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I can get started. Um, again, quick introduction. I'm Sam Arcuri. I'm the head and the senior fellow with uh, Johnson & Johnson. Um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you today. Um, and I would like to talk a little bit about um, how the 3D printing as a technology platform has really been um, reimagining and rechanging the healthcare landscape uh, specifically from, um, you know, from, from my company perspective. Um, very quickly, um, just want to, for those of you who may not know, uh, what, who Johnson & Johnson is, we are one of the bigger, um, healthcare companies based in the United States. Um, we are, um, an $80 billion U.S. company. Uh, approximately 50% of the revenue is coming from pharmaceutical side and the other 50% uh, between med device and the consumer health products. Uh, one of the things um, J&J has been doing over the last few years is been really taking, taking advantage of 3D printing technologies um, and really scaling it um, across to disrupt um, the innovation across all these three different sectors, med devices, pharmaceuticals, and also on the consumer health side. Um, if you look at, um, you know, how um, the, the the external environment is shaping up, um, if you look at uh, the pandemic, what is happening right now, um, this technology really can help bring access uh, and personalization um, and really a large level of transparency um, to the healthcare in a very, very highly uh, digital environment. So uh, some of the some of the urgency and the needs you can see in this um, world and uh, personalization and customization is one important area and uh, 3D printing really enables that particular uh, particular aspect of it, what, what our customers are uh, wanting. If you quickly look at um, you know, how the healthcare uh, globally is, right? We have uh, aging populations. Definitely the, the, the clinical outcomes are very important, uh, focusing on the outcomes, um, the reduced reimbursement and the healthcare cost. Uh, there's a lot of lack of personalization and uh, total cost too. So there is an opportunity for us to really bring in these technologies to help solve some of these problems. Uh, whether it's COVID printing, um, robotics, bioprinting, um, various type of pharmaceutical type of things. 3D printing is a very important role in bringing solutions that the innovation so that we can solve some of these, uh, the big health and healthcare problems going into this. Very high level, um, if you look at 3D printing and, and a personalization specifically, if there is a common workflow, uh, a workflow, if I take it at the, in a surgical level, uh, where you could take, use the DICOM data from um, CT scans, X-rays, you know, MRIs, and be able to design a custom product, uh, whether it is a guide, uh, instrument, implant, a model, and able to print it locally in the hospital setting or outside, uh, there is a complex variety of, you know, personalized instruments, implants, and instruments, you know, the same workflow would also work with, uh, 
the region where there's another bioprinting. The bioprinting space is expanding quite a bit, able to uh, create a workflow within within the clinical setting, uh, in the hospital setting that uh, we could take the patient cells, incubate them, uh, in, build and print them into a scaffold uh, specifically for the anatomy, implant it, um, and able to deliver um, a regenerative solution that will not have foreign um, metals and polymers in your body, right? Similar type of approach and workflow on personalization is pharmaceutical area is to take your genetic information or your genomics and able to uh, print custom product, custom medicine, whether it is uh, multiple APIs together or it could be customized APIs uh, in the right dosage form. Um, and similarly, outside the medical side, the consumer experience is similar, similarly can be delivered uh, with skin care in the beauty space, um, where you can take a picture of, um, you know, the anatomy you want, able to design everything on your smartphone, and able to print that particular stuff, either a face mask or other beauty type of things, um, in a retail setting at home, and able to deliver that for yourself. So it's a it, it, 3D printing enables a wide variety of personalization and solutions, uh, not just in the medical device space, but broadly in pharmaceuticals um, and also in the consumer space. In today's day, and day, we have um, focused on five areas and how this 3D printing can be game changing. One is definitely we talked a lot about the ultra personalization and able to print on demand uh, within a hospital setting or a clinical setting or retail setting uh, is definitely this 3D printing is helping us. Second is the design possibilities. You know, so in a traditional design and manufacturing cannot deliver certain innovation that 3D printing can really change it. Like we can give you some examples a little later. Uh, because of portability of the technology, we see this technology can be mobile, you know, have these in a, in a big truck and able to move it to different locations where the need is, uh, providing the access to the folks who need that. Uh, 3D printing also brings a lot of efficiency and gains from a manufacturing perspective. And then lastly, being an additive technology, uh, we see a lot less cost end to end uh, from efficiency perspective. And also it is less wastage uh, and sustainable technology. So these are the five areas I think the applications have been uh, implemented across. Very highly, I think the process by which you know we have been approaching applying this technology to the solutions for our patients uh, is really understand where the clinical customer need is, um, able to you know digitally design uh, the particular need, customize or non-customize, and really print at scale. The advantage of this technology is one: it is the speed of which you could change a design. Uh, customize the design and the freedom it can bring, and also ability to scale it. Uh, you know, compared to traditional manufacturing where you have to build tooling and fixturing and everything else, 3D printing brings that ability to scale very fast. So there are some examples of things which have been done, uh, whether it's a surgical cutting guides, uh, personalized consumer products, um, you know, hip implants. Um, recently launched uh, a patient-specific graft cage for people who have large uh, focal defects in their in their bones. Um, the CMF space implants in that area and in surgical instruments and so on and so forth. Just a few examples of uh, areas which uh, which are getting quite um, pop, you know uh, relevant and uh, available in the markets. I'm just going to do a couple quick. Um, um, examples of how 3D printing uh, really enabled. Uh, one is what is called as a, a graft cage, a long bone graft cage. So this is when a big section of your long bone is removed uh, for various reasons, whether it is a trauma space or due to oncology. Uh, a 3D printed, as, first of all, a scan is taken from the patient of that uh, anatomy. 
and a 3D printed cage using a bioabsorbable um, PCL material along with some bone growth factors is built in. And then once you take you take the cage, a healthy morselized bone is um, you know stuffed into the cage, and it's put around um, the the nail and also around the bone. Uh, we see a significant, um, this is one of the new to the market, new to the world type of a concept, uh, 3D printing really delivered from personalization, also a clinical advantage. Um, and uh, this is in market right now, um, you know, in various markets globally um, to deliver some very therapeutic, uh, much needed therapeutic uh, solutions for the patients who have this type of uh, significant trauma. Um, advantage of this technology, 3D printing, has provided um, you know very great graft retention, which is one of the issues in the in the in the, in the field right now. Uh, we can adjust and customize the absorption of that bioabsorbable polymer uh, anywhere between two to four years. So depending upon uh, your overall health, uh, the physicians can adjust uh, the reabsorption rates. Um, and then there is a definitely certain osteoconductive coatings that have been promoted, uh, which also um, delivers the, uh, the bone growth and advantage to that. Um, so anyway, just a quick example of how uh, 3D printing has delivered some of these things. The other area is uh, the bone and growth structures in hard uh, titanium implants, whether it is uh, joints implants, uh, and you see the bone and growth structures in there, or the inner body cages in spine uh, uh, implants. Um, the, we could customize, uh, custom design, or even create very complex designs to really enable um, creation of these structures that, the bone and growth structures that it provides a very superior uh, bone growth and uh, uh, osteogenicity. So, um, definite advantage from 3D printing, uh, able to deliver that in a very, um, very critical way. So as you can see, some of the structural advantages of using this technology to build, build that, um, you know, bone and growth structure, and then you coat it with the hydroxyapatite over that. So um, just kind of little examples of a couple areas where this technology has really bring a lot of value uh, in the in orthopedic or just overall in the med device space. Um, some of the things, uh, what is happening right now uh, within my company is we definitely taking advantage of this, what is called as the bone and growth structures and really expanding into all the devices where this could be applied and bring value for our patients. Um, we talked a little bit about the patient-specific implants, whether it is a hip, hip cup uh, or, or the graft cage in trauma space. Uh, definitely, it is happening and uh, scaling very well. Um, and definitely in the consumer space, there's big push around the personalization, whether it's a, whether it's a beauty products, whether it's a wound care product, healthcare products, uh, vision care, a uh, lot of applications in that space. And then the surgical tools themselves, you know, whether you want to customize it for a physician, customize it for certain anatomy patients, so on and so forth. Um, um, definitely that's happening also in parallel. Um, in future, we definitely are working um, diligently in these four spaces. One is definitely 3D bioprinting. You may have seen a lot of presentations in this conference also, uh, whether it is a meniscus, soft tissue, cartilage, hard tissue like bone, um, both for either the tissue uh, augmentation in a, in a, you know, when you want to replace the tissue or if it is um, for testing of different compounds and uh, uh, things of that nature that these bioprinted tissue can be used for that space. So uh, printed, uh, printed electronics, 3D printing of electronics and sensors, whether it is onto instruments, implants, or even the consumer product is also an emerging area. Uh, getting a lot of traction. Uh, personalization of medicine, right? Whether it is uh, multiple APIs, uh, really dose dosage forms, really adjusted to the patient needs. And lastly, this 3D printing is also creating new business models. I'll give an example of what is called the point of care printing. Uh, many of you may have heard that already, uh, but I'll give an example around that. So 
um, definitely a lot of energy and uh, excitement uh, how 3D printing can, is continuing to shape uh, where we go from the innovation perspective. I'm going to just uh, quickly touch base uh, some of the applications we are seeing uh, moving forward. In orthopedics, I talked a little bit about the bone and growth structures. There is also quite a bit of an effort around um, using this technology in the next generation uh, uh, 4D printing, using various stimuli um, to change shape, right? Whether it's in expandable cages, um, different type of products where we can fine tune the shape as, as the body grows and anatomy changes. So uh, using technology like 4D printing, um, the stimuli response materials uh, is, is also an emerging area. Definitely taking advantage of this technology for anti-infection, uh, able to use anti-infectives within the, within the powder or the resin, uh, able to deliver certain things in the hospital setting. Uh, and also some of the engineering properties, um, you know, creating uh, high strength, wear resistance, so on and so forth. Um, integrating the sensors is also um, an emerging area, definitely will be adding more. Um, and the point of care printing, I talked a little bit about it, um, able to print stuff very quickly in a 24 hour time period for a custom implant and deliver quickly in the surgical setting. Uh, is also one of the one of the emerging areas. And the bioprinting I mentioned, um, the cartilage and the soft tissues, uh, but also hard tissue like bone, right? Hyperelastic bone uh, with with targeted biologics and uh, drug delivery platforms linked to that. So those are some of the areas, you know, 3D printing can bring a lot of value in the orthopedic space. Um, in the surgical areas, the robotics, surgical robotics is uh, uh, is becoming a lot, lot more uh, used, uh, both from um, you know navigation perspective, but also uh, pure surgical effort also. So personalization of some of the uh, end effectors, uh, bringing the digital surgery in conjunction with uh, with 3D printing is also getting um, very, very important. Um, there is a lot of the micro printing technologies, including electronics sensors. Uh, within very um, catheters, ablation devices um, is also an area we are expanding quite a bit on. Um, and then lastly, we talked about, you know, how do we innovate downstream uh, with the personalization that in, the, in the point of care setting is also applicable, like what we talked about in the orthopedic space. Um, in the consumer action app applications, we definitely talk, touch base a little while ago. There is a, a oral care device which can provide um, oral care uh, cleaning solutions customized for your oral needs. Uh, skincare products, beauty care products, uh, some of these things are incorporated, printed with sensors, so it can uh, customize your needs specifically and be able to deliver the uh, solution in this context. Um, and then just the whole where we are printing that, you know, whether it's printing at home, uh, printing in a retail space, that area is going to be the workflow space is going to continue to evolve um, in this area. And then lastly, there is also application vision care, whether it is printed contact lenses, uh, you know, vision devices, surgical devices, uh, incorporating some of the um, sensors and actives, uh, delivery mechanisms within the contact lenses is also going to um, bring a lot more differentiation uh, in, in this vision care space. Um, lastly, I think I touched already on the pharmaceutical space. I think uh, definitely the personalization of precision medicine is going to continue to grow. Uh, a lot's happening in the space, whether you're printing pediatric or geriatric dosage forms within the compound, you know, within the clinical setting uh, can also be used for a standard, um, um, you know, a standard delivery of drugs, uh, compliance of things. Um, so 3D printing is definitely bringing a lot of value uh, in profile matching uh, dosage forms, uh, bringing sensors technology and able to print them for compliance sake and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of innovation happening in the pharmaceutical space also. Um, so I just wanted to uh, quickly touch base on this one area, uh, what is called as the business model innovation. 
the point of care printing, may, many of you may have seen this happening. Uh, a lot of the hospitals and physicians are taking advantage of it. Uh, be able to put, put these printers, uh, polymer printers, and sometimes even metal printers, uh, very close or inside the surgical site that when you take a patient data, you can um, take the CT scan or an MRI or an X-ray and able to um, plan the surgery. We print those models, print the anatomical model or um, you know, the device model, whether it is an instrument or a cutting guide, and then able to simulate the surgery early on on a complex, uh, complex surgeries and able to plan the surgery. It's saving a lot of the surgical efficiency, bringing surgical efficiency and saving time. Um, in the similar context, we could also use 3D printing technology near or in hospital setting to able to print instruments, personalized for that particular case, and also implants and so on and so forth. So a um, lot of the work right now is happening mostly on the anatomical model space. Uh, but we do see that it will expand into uh, more of the custom guides, uh, instruments and implants in orthopedic space. And then uh, beyond that, I think once it starts in orthopedics, um, definitely will expand into other areas too, um, uh, quite a bit. So a lot of major hospitals globally are, are doing that. Uh, examples, Mayo Clinic in the United States, um, Northwell United States, a uh, bunch of hospitals in the Europe um, and also in Asia and China too. So um, just high level emerging area, uh, it's gonna definitely shape how 3D printing can bring um, innovation into the hospital setting. I just wanna also give a quick, um, you know, uh, community, quick um, innovation, what this community, 3D printing community brought during this COVID crisis, right? I'm, I'm sure that we have seen a lot of these examples in India also, uh, but in the United States, when we had that, you know, the pandemic really coming through, uh, we were able to quickly, uh, as a community, able to deliver, taking the technology to scale quickly and deliver solutions to the the healthcare needs. One example is a ventilator splitter concept, uh, which is able to, during the, when the ventilators were really on a demand and did not have enough, uh, 3D printing was able to print some splitter concept to be able to use the same ventilator on two patients. Face shields, various PPEs, uh, swabs um, for testing, 3D printing was able to provide some unique differentiation um, and able to print models, uh, various type of things for the therapeutic therapeutic reasons for the for the patients. Uh, it really did bring a big value during the pandemic. I know it's still going on, uh, but uh, the crisis at at the point at the peak of it uh, was, you know, we were able to take advantage of um, this technology to bring solution quickly to our customers. Um, just kind of a high level around um, um, this, you know, how we operate. Uh, you know, one of the things with this technology is changes rapidly within this emerging area. So um, my, you know, our strategy is really to be engaged with strategic partners globally, uh, able to, you know, quickly reach and work with uh, folks globally to, um, you know, scale that. Uh, whether it is a large strategic partners or niche uh, technology partners, we definitely are important and to collaborate across. And then a um, lot of the early end innovation happens in the academic settings and some, you know, definitely the governments are a big important portion, important area that uh, promote this innovation, provide incentives, um, uh, and it's happening in many countries, and I see that also in India too. And then uh, definitely the large hospitals and medical setting, we continue to work partnership with them. So we can't do it by yourself. I think this community of, um, you know, 3D printing community, but also the clinical, uh, governmental, and the technology community need to be together to really, uh, really bring this innovation to forefront. Um, so, just in quick closing, um, it's going to say that uh, this technology, 3D printing, 
I see that not as just one individual technology, it's a platform of technologies, uh, starting with polymers to metals, um, to bioprinting, to electronics. Um, it's overall is well integrated into bringing um, therapeutic value and value to our patients and, and, and the customers globally um, to all of them. So with that, I'm gonna uh, stop and, um, and see if there are any um, questions, um, comments we can talk through. If there are, um, I, I'm not sure how um, how the questions would come about, but uh, if there are no questions, we can uh, end. Thank you, everyone.